Okay, good morning. Uh, in the last uh, several classes, we talked about organolithium compounds. So, if you think about the periodic table, now we have to move to little heavier atoms. Uh, next atom is uh, magnesium. Uh, so, in today's class, we exclusively talk about magnesium and uh, magnesium and zinc. Okay. Uh, we will give you a rough idea about um, I mean uh, the position of magnesium and zinc in heterocyclic chemistry, but uh, uh, you can think of uh, a, a greater use of uh, both magnesium and zinc in near future, simply because there are many more new methods are coming up and uh, methods for preparation of organo magnesium and organo zinc compounds. And, uh, to begin with, I will just introduce you to a very active kind of metal and uh, which is known as uh, Ricci zinc or Reichi zinc. Mm. Reichi metals, if you go to the uh, Wikipedia, they will say uh, Reichi metals, but uh, for us, uh, magnesium and uh, zinc should be alright. Magnesium is uh, Reiki is a basically an organic chemist uh, and, and he is in, uh, in the University of Nebraska, Lincoln, USA. So, he still is a professor, but sh and he has opened up an also an industry how to make e reactive metals. For example, magnesium is not known to react with a double bond, carbon carbon double bond, but if you have a very highly reactive magnesium, it can react provided that is a conjugated one. For example, it can react with birodine to form cyclic uh, magnesium compounds, magnesium intermediates. Okay. Uh, what, what is the speciality? Speciality is nothing, very simple that you take a magnesium salt, magnesium salt and then reduce it with a metal, uh, reducing the metal unlike electrochemical preparation. And in this case, if you uh, let us say potassium, so all of us can guess uh, what would be and then uh, this uh, chloride. And in the place of potassium also one can use lithium uh, or uh, sodium. So, uh, probably it is the, uh, the tricks lie in the preparation of the, uh, the or the use or the conditions whatever, but the net result is that you get this active magnesium. Okay. So, this active magnesium is used uh, for the preparation of organo uh, magnesium compounds. So, all of us know the typical uh, organometric preparations requires uh, I mean fundamentally uh, three different methods right. One is uh, the very first one is uh, how to make an organometallic compound, how to make an organometallic compound. The first uh, thing that which comes to our mind is uh, deprotonation that means you remove a proton, remove a proton. So, the, the, by which one can uh, produce a magnesium, an organomagnesium. For example, all of us know, right? Uh, if you have acetylene, acetylene, and if you react with um, ethyl uh, magnesium iodide, or mag uh, so all of us know what is the product? Uh, again, a new uh, organomagnesium organo magnesium compound, a new, new organomagnesium compound. So, this is then uh, next important thing is um, uh, could be uh, halogen exchange. So, it is an exchange with halogen, exchange with halogen, exchange with halogen. We will talk about uh, examples today. So, we begin with an ex uh, okay, uh, but the combination has to be right combinations, means the organo magnesium that will be produced should be weaker, weaker nucleophile, weaker base, okay, because these are the basic conditions. Um, uh, this all these metal organo metallics actually um, are referred to as uh, base or bases. Okay. So, uh, that means the reaction would proceed in the uh, forward direction provided like in this example, in the previous example for example. Uh, on your left hand side you had a um, ethyl magnesium iodide, ethyl magnesium iodide and on the right hand side this. Now, if you uh, compare this ethyl minus and uh, uh, acetylene minus which one is more stable all of us know. The stability uh, goes to acetylene or less basic, less nucleophilic. So, this is the pattern. So, in the, the halogen exchange also would follow the similar pattern. And the third op option that is, uh, is applied in this particular example. What is the third option? All of us know by now, no. What is the third option of preparing an organometallic compounds? Very good. Because lithium case it was not there, because that is the lowest, uh, uh, the lightest metal. 
but in this case uh, you can use the transmetal lesion. So, transmetal lesion that means uh, for transmetal lesion uh, in, in the case of uh, magnesium only option you have is the lithium. So, if you have a organolithium compound, organolithium compound and then uh, use uh, let us say uh, magnesium bromide. So, what uh, you are likely to get uh, this and lithium bromide. So, like this you can go on and if you want to be let us make a zinc compound, uh, I mean you can take organolithium or, or organomagnesium and then add. That means, transmetals are normally goes in favor of the heavier atoms, heavier and less electronegative, uh, electropositive atoms, okay, that is the trend. And uh, now, coming to this uh, heterocyclic chemistry, I think the very first thing that uh, we should uh, talk about um, the case of let us say for example, um, pyrrole. Now, um, let us look at the feasibility of this reactions um, methyl magnesium iodide which is commonly made. Uh, so, uh, what kind of reactions do we expect out here? Normally, methyl magnesium iodide uh, is nucleophilic in nature, but uh, very first thing you should consider is the deprotonation reactions or the halogen exchange reactions, those are the first reactions. Now, we have an active proton here whether we should think about it. That means, uh, is it a possibility uh, instead of the hydrogen if you have magnesium iodide the other thing is methane. So, is it a possibility? How do I know it, whether it is feasible? Uh, basically, you have to think about this uh, acidity, NH acidity between NH acidity and methane acidity which one is all of us know which one is more acidic pyrola hydrogen is more acidic. So, the corresponding uh, uh, magnesium compound would be resulting from this reaction that is perfectly all right. Then this problem. Now, if you want to do a, do a reaction, for example, let us say Rx. So Rx. So there are actually several options. How many options? Three. three there, there are clearly three different options. Uh, two, three, one. One, two, three. All. That means nitrogen can be alkylated. Uh, C2 can be alkylated. C3 can be alkylated. And in fact. And uh, this is uh, this is not a very good reaction for the pyrrole chemistry. If you um, uh, think of, about these organomagnesiums, okay. I mean, all the three different reactions are uh, reaction products are known in the literature. Okay. Now go to the so that means uh, it is not very encouraging. Well, there are uh, people have tried to uh, optimize the reaction conditions by changing the solvent, this thing, that thing, but eventually, but uh, the reaction is not a very clear cut reaction for. Okay. Uh, then obviously, what, what is our next option? Next option is uh, indole. So, after pyrrole, uh, the next option could be indole and as usual. Uh, so, if you take uh, let us say uh, ethyl in this case ethyl often is used because ethyl is preferred to methyl uh, in generating organo magnesium compounds simply because it will have a little um, um, higher boiling that is it and so easier to handle methyl bromide. And <coughs> so, now what you will see that, uh, that one of the options uh, is it now reduced. So, you have now py pyrrole magnesium bromide eh, sorry indole magnesium bromide. So, and all of us know due to the resonance uh, these uh, indole reactions uh, takes place at the uh, C3 position, uh, C, uh, C3 position, and there is also a possibility that uh, the reactions and also can take place. That means uh, there are two possibilities: uh, C, uh, okay, say alkylation. I can say we write C, there are C alkylations, uh, acylations. All these possibilities are there, and similarly, uh, N alkylation and uh, n acylations all these reactions are possible all these reactions are possible okay so just giving you one example uh, if you react this magnesium compound with a uh, uh, ribose sugar i'll indicate i'll not indicate the uh, stereochemistry to make it simpler uh, so if you write this benzyl pro uh, protected um, ribose sugar and this. So, you are likely to get two different products, likely to get two I mean uh, two different products or other um, 
you can say uh, four different products, all kinds of products. But in this particular example, uh, there are two different products have been uh, found. One of them is uh, N alkylated product, N alkylated product and the product uh, again a ribose compound, then uh, benzyl, benzyl and CH2 benzyl. The other possible product uh, is now C S C alkylated product or C product. So, hydrogen and benzyl is an open chain compound, open chain compound. So, it should be O H then benzyl, benzyl and this one is O H which one is O H. Now, I think we can explain, we can explain very simply because uh, uh, this is nothing but if you uh, rewrite uh, this is nothing but it is an O H up here and this and uh, this is nothing and uh, this is basically an aldehyde right. All of us know that sugar is an aldehyde and in equilibrium they uh, exist as aldehydes. So, uh, basically that means, uh, the starting material itself uh, has dual reactivity and, uh, and after the reaction is over, so you can get the cyclic and acyclic compound that we all of us know. Then in addition, there is a possibility that N alkylation takes place or the C alkylation or C acylation takes place. All these possible. In this particular example, that these two compounds have been identified, but the, the striking thing is that both are uh, produced, but in uh, uh, unequal amounts. Uh, this first one is produced in 86 percent, uh, uh, 86 to 14 ratio, and this sol the solvent used was uh, THF. Uh, by choosing this example, I just I would like to say that this, these organometallic reactions are very sensitive to reaction conditions, temperature as well as the solvent. Now, if the same reaction if carried out in a, a DCM, dichloromethane and uh, you get you see here you get exclusively uh, C product, okay, C product. So, that is basically that is the uh, point. That means, if you are handling with an organ magnesium compound, there is a um, reaction possible with ambient nucleophile. So, the, the ratio of the products can be changed uh, probably by uh, changing the reaction conditions. Now, uh, look at a uh, uh, similar reaction, uh, but little different. Um, if again, you take uh, indole magnesium bromide, and in this case, uh, the reactant is is <coughs> in imide succinamide succinamide and then it is substituted with two chlorine atoms two chlorine atoms okay so uh, uh, nothing uh, no nothing just basically th they are mixed together so what do you expect the I mean, now we have to look for. So th this is highly acidic. This uh, the nitrogen is highly acidic because it's such imide, so it can uh, it can destroy as part of it. Okay, even there is part of it. Then uh, what else possible? Uh, then the amide carbonyls are not very reactive towards Grignard. All of us know. Okay, and so that's the difference between organo lithium and organo magnesium. Uh, so one of these reactions is basically indicative of. Uh, the relative reactivity, we will come to that later. Uh, when you talk about organo lithium and organo other metal compounds, uh, what, what are the market difference between the two classes? Organo lithium, that means organo lithium has a speciality that they are very reactive. At the same time, you can control the, uh, their reactivity, okay. that is the advantage with organo lithium compounds. And uh, like you can do the transmetallation, you can reduce the reactivity you can reduce the temperature, you can moderate the reactivity, all these possibilities. So, in any case, in this case, in already by virtue of having the metal magnesium, it itself is quite less reactive. So, and uh, that means, nucleophilic addition is not taking place, only that means, it is an addition and elimination reaction takes place at the site of the chlorine, at the site of the chlorine. Uh, eventual result is uh, a molecule. 
you can uh, so this is uh, so of course uh, it it uh, it will require uh, twice of these uh, magnesium reagent and this is hydrogen this is hydrogen this is hydrogen many of you will be wondering why such a reaction was taken up I mean there are all possible reactions with organic magnesium. Actually, if you oxidize, you get this. Uh, um, uh, you get uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. You get basically a carbazole kind of molecule. Carbazole kind of molecule, and the molecule eventually is take, uh, elaborated to uh, a molecule known as uh, staurosporinone. Staurosporinone. Staurosporinone is an advanced intermediate for a very natural products. Okay, but uh, we don't worry about this. It's a little, little more complicated than this. And so, now let us. Uh, that means, uh, um, let us say what, what next? Again, we restrict our examples to organomagnesium and five-membered ring. For example, uh, if you are to make a benzothiazole. <coughs> Benzothiazole, uh, organomagnesium compound, uh, something like something like this X. So, what reagent would you choose? What reagent would you choose? That's important. And you, you know, there are other what procedure would you adopt? I have already said that these for generation of organomagnesium, deprotonations, uh, trans, uh, uh, halogen exchange, and the transmetallations. So we have already seen that uh, we have already seen that uh, uh, these uh, five-membered heterocycles with the active hydrogen can be deprotonated with lithium reagents. So you can do the transmetallation. Okay, but in this particular example, you don't have to. Why should you incorporate lithium, which is quite more expensive than magnesium? So, if you directly can convert this, that is perfectly all right. So, how do I directly do this? What are the reagents available? Okay. We, so far, we have seen uh, methyl magnesium bromide, but uh, typically, actually, uh, this uh, typically in this example, tertiary butyl magnesium bromide can, could be used, uh, ethyl uh, magnesium chloride could be used or uh, ethyl magnesium bromide could be used and there are many instances where you can use also this is very popular reagent isopropyl magnesium chloride reason being this is readily available isopropyl chloride is cheaper than many other um, halogenating agent halogenating agent and so one of these things would do okay then once you have this uh, you can you know you can uh, you can go to this uh, rest of the typical reactions of the organomagnesium compounds organomagnesium compound this particular compound was made in a scale of uh, 10 kg do you understand the meaning reason being it is actually say for it is a it is used as a reactive reagent in a pharmaceutical uh, industry if you are interested i can give you the reference this was published in 2007 uh, J O C and nine seven nine eight page number. By giving what I mean to say, that means Gignard can be done in kg. Kg. I have seen a reaction called Birch reduction. I don't know whether you know or not. Birch reduction is done in uh, liquid ammonia by adding lithium or sodium. Lithium is less violent, but as you go to sodium, it becomes more violent. But they, I mean, they just dump you know, kgs and kgs of sodium, you know, without taking uh, without. Uh, uh, that's in Madras. Uh, there is a chemical company called Orchid Chemicals. Colony, do you know? Orchid Chemicals. No, Madras, Chennai. If you go in the walk in the city, Madras, the, their tower is so big you can see from distance. Okay. Uh, any case, uh, so this was reacted with reacted with a. A compound. Okay, I'll just uh, in short will write. And then you have to predict what could be the product. Okay, uh, apparently it looks like an amino acid derivative, and it's a five-membered nucleus, 
uh, I think by all of us know uh, what it is and then NH bulk, NH bulk and amino acid means this is an well defined stereochemistry and then uh, here uh, then you have one more moiety NH and I think I write PG to abbreviate PG is protecting group and NH. NH okay. So, this is the other reactant uh, okay. I think by uh, have you recognized what is the heteros other heterocyclic moiety uh, uh, imidazole fine good. So, uh, I mean actually after a semester you will forget. So, that is why I am asking this okay. and this part is known as guanidine. Guanidine. So, it's, that means it's, uh, there is a center of amino acid, there is a center of uh, this thing and this is guanidine and you have a now heterocyclic Grignard reagent. So, you have to predict the reaction product. So, what is the product do you expect? Okay. So, where do you start from? Uh, organometallics, they go for abstraction of protons, the addition and dis displacement all these things. Okay. There is a possibility normally I mean uh, unless the conditions are mentioned you will not be able to predict whether this NH is sufficiently acidic or not. Guanidine nitrogen is not very acidic all of us know guanidine is a base, base. So, so, it is likely to be not to be a very highly active. So, what are the other other active hydrogen NH bulk hydrogen could be acidic sufficiently acidic because an emid hydrogen uh, and other possibility if the, if the reactions are prolonged like uh, in the previous example if you recall the sugar OH was free. So, if you have excess of Grignard 1 Grignard would consume the OH hydrogen and then rings opens up becomes aldehyde then reaction takes place. So, likewise the reaction uh, there is a possibility and what is the possible reaction? The possible reactions one of the possible reactions now is <coughs> Uh, one of the possible reactions could be uh, this uh, uh, benzothiazole, this benzothiazole, this nitrogen and this amino, uh, amino acid part NH and BOC and uh, rest of the things here. So, uh, this is a possibility. Now, first of all you have to identify whether this is a possibility or not. Uh, how do you know? How, how do I know? So, that means uh, if this is the reaction possible then uh, that, that the group that should come out is this one imidazole. imidazole. Now, is it a possibility how do I know that same old thing that it should produce a uh, weaker base weaker base and is it a weaker base or not that is what I have to know. Now, you have enough of heterocyclic chemistry or knowledge. So, in the previous case it was also in 5 member heterocycle with 2 atoms right and in this case also 5 member heterocycle with 2 atoms. But mind it uh, uh, this uh, uh, the acid corresponding to the benzothiazole is a CH sp 2 CH hydrogen and in this case you have NH hydrogen NH hydrogen and that too again a pyrolytic hydrogen. So, all of us know pyrolytic hydrogen is more acidic than any other I mean the corresponding ok and because pyrrole forms salt with potassium metals etcetera etcetera. So, it is such a nice even potassium hydroxide is sufficient to abstract the proton from pyrrole and H. So, these are the thing you have to remember ok. So, that means the reaction is a quite feasible one. Now, uh, just we will take up one more very important nucleus I do not know, uh, I don't know uh, the, again uh, this nucleus is uh, produced in kgs and kgs and tons and tons and uh, this is a basically raw a starting material for polythiophen. Have you heard of it? Oligothiophen. Eh? Have you heard? Oh, what, what are they famous for? Louder. Conductor, I should say, it's not semiconductor. Well, well, if you dope it, conductor becomes conductor, fine. Yes, very useful, very useful. Thio oligothiophen and polythiophenes. Uh, they are very useful for conducting material it can be uh, made use for uh, preparing you know uh, organic uh, transistors organic, uh, okay. and then uh, thin films conducting film films all these things. And they are uh, produced these uh, polythiophenes or oligothiophenes are produced in tons again in tons that is what one of my students said who worked on this. Okay. Um, in this case what you see there is a um, hexyl moiety 
hexyl moiety is basically uh, it is required for make it a processable means solubility problem is uh, removed. Now, uh, if you are to make a Grignard in this case the, the Grignard has been that the Grignard that has been used is uh, TMP and magnesium uh, chloride and lithium chloride. TMP magnesium chloride lithium chloride I think um, um, do you know all what it is actually it is a tetramethyl pipiridide tetramethyl pipiridide and this is magnesium uh, chloride and lithium chloride it is a very popular base it is a very hindered base reactive base sufficiently reactive as you can see, you will see in a minute it is a very reactive base and this is this is <coughs> recently been known as Paul Nockel, uh, is a German scientist Paul Nockel, uh, Paul Nockel uh, so actually it is known as Nockel and uh, Hauser and this, this Hauser is C R Hauser Charles Rose Hauser, Charles Rose Hauser something like that it is pretty old person. So, it is now known as Nockel Hauser uh, base in the previous class we learned a new base called port base and now this is a, this ok. So, these are all the compositions are different, but this quite is, is found to be pretty useful and if you use this base and this you know, professor Nokel and I think uh, he is I think is junior to me by maybe in by 2, 3 years and he was in US for some time then he moved to Germany and um, throughout his life he is working on this zinc and magnesium, zinc and magnesium. So, you see there is so much to do you know this field ok and he has popularized organo magnesiums in uh, uh, very uh, in different fields and he also recently he has used uh, all synthesized uh, elliptician a natural product. And so, once you do this uh, what you will find there are uh, striking behaviors of these reagents one of them is the deprotonation you can directly deprotonate and uh, produce this um, um, magnesium metal magnesium uh, reagent that is Grignard. And uh, we have to note here uh, you have to note here it gives only selectively one hydrogen ok and all of us know the hydrogen adjacent to the heteroatom is more acidic in nature and so uh, one of these two hydrogen, but uh, also one can just quickly guess because of the tetramethyl pipiridyl steric bulk it is not approaching the uh, position 2 positions. So, it is approaching the 5 position. So, it can be the steric bulk also can be made use of in uh, doing a selective uh, uh, deprotonations or magnesiations that is it. So, once you have these then uh, you can uh, I mean you do all kinds of things for example, uh, you have this all of us know, uh, uh, but uh, you see uh, you have to note few minutes ago I said that these organo magnesiums are not very reactive towards amide, but uh, again now I am telling you that ok, but uh, why? So, in this case uh, DMF is nothing but it is a formulating agent. So, in this case it is reacting. So, there, there are some of these uh, tricky reactivities you have to uh, take note of that is it, because it is a 5 member heterocycle. So, it is a pi excessive. So, it is likely to be more nucleophilic than simple aromatics ok. And now let us say I mean what is the, how to make this oligo. So, if you take uh, now one more uh, thiophene I think then you just couple them that is what we call coupling right. So, in the next class actually we will talking just summarize because some of you know all these couplings, but just summarize what the couplings are and so cross couplings. So, you have two different heterocyclic moiety you just couple them, but in this case it is magnesium. So, you have to also remember some of the things that which particular conditions are required for the magnesium coupling. One of the coupling last class I talked about right the Kumada coupling, Kumada coupling requires iron, but also the this is a basically any kind of coupling uh, with magnesium reagent organo magnesium reagents are known as the Kumaya coupling ok. And uh, in this case the reagent that is used is nickel chloride and D 
P P P. I think uh, by now all of us know. Uh, fourth year I taught, right? Uh, uh, any research scholar who knows what D P P P? Huh? Uh, maybe uh, diphenyl. That, is, that means diphenyl phosphinylpropane. That's it. Okay. So uh, what is the result? The result is uh, result is hex, and and of course then uh, this. Then that, that means you get an uh, advanced monomer, and then that can be polymerized. That can be polymerized. Okay. So, <coughs> what else? Uh, one or two more, maybe. Uh, uh, I think uh, I'll just skip some of the examples. They are typically, um, uh, uh, typically uh, the extension of what we have talked about. Uh, now, uh, let us. Uh, this is uh, this is an example uh, which gives you a lot of lessons actually. He, uh, lessons here. The starting is uh, the starting is uh, thiophene again. If you recall the previous case, the thiophene magnesium chloride was made by made by um, uh, deprotonation. In this case, uh, in this case, you take uh, isopropyl magnesium bromide. Isopropyl magnesium bromide. There is a possibility of uh, deprotonation because you have a hydrogen up here, and all these things. Fine. And so many things can happen. It can uh, take deprotonation. It, uh, it can uh, do deprotonation. It can do the halogen exchange. Halogen exchange. Okay. It can do halogen exchange. It can attack the ester. Because in this, from the school, we have been learning that organomagnesium means it will uh, react with an ester to form the corresponding ketone or uh, alcohols, right? But uh, just by proper choice of organomagnesium, in this case, it's a little bulkier, bulkier. So you are uh, rather uh, directing the group to either to protonation or the halogen exchange. Protonation and halogen exchange, deprotonation and halogen exchange often compete with each other in terms of the rates. So now, and uh, I mean you can guess which one is likely to be removed. Okay, uh, since uh, this hydrogen is away from sulfur, is not so th that is not very uh, favorable one. So between the two bromine then. And the steric bulk has prevented its uh, reactions with the uh, ester group. So uh, then uh, halogen exchange. Now which halogen? Uh, well, just a guess because it's, it forms a sort of a carbon ion. So it's a for a carbon ion. So you have an electron withdrawing uh, groups here, uh, and, uh, the ester. So it is likely that this is uh, this being uh, removed, and you get the transmetals. Fine. Now, uh, you want to uh, let us say elaborate this one. Uh, to corresponding allyl substituted compounds, allyl substitute compounds. So, what would be your choice? I, if we did not know anything, so we would have done just uh, quenched with allyl bromide. But that gives a lot of complications. I, I told you once, uh, once before, the organomagnesiums are good, but in certain cases they are very complicated. I mean, direct that is the reason, that is the genesis of Kumada coupling. Why Kumada coupling was required? Because straight reactions of the organometal, uh, organo grignards with the alkylating agents are not very straightforward. Okay, and because of many problems. One of these problems is the, again a transmetal. This is a grignard. This is halide again a trans, uh, sorry, not transmetal, so uh, halogen exchange can take place. Halogen exchange can take place depending on their marginal pKa differences. Okay. So, so what should be the next step then? We want to get to this one. So, what should we do? We moderate the reactivity or, or moderate the reactivity or change the reactivity. So, how to moderate the reactivity? How to moderate the reactivity? Go to the transmetallations. Go to the transmetallations. So uh, the, the commonest reagent for the transmetallations, uh, okay, uh, because uh, normally, okay, when you go to think about transmetallations, you should first think about 
non transition metals non transition metals but but in the, if you have magnesium then of course there is no other but you have to go to the transition metals then you, once you go to there then you have to find the one which is somewhat cheaper okay and the uh, cuprous cyanide is cheaper and there are two lithium chloride this lithium chloride is actually uh, provides the solubility this for cuprous cyanide so this reagent should be soluble in uh, partly in organic solvents so once you have this then so you have now uh, you have now cuprous uh, cyanide and eventually you will get uh, this this copper reagents okay organo copper i mean the i mean the, and now the reaction uh, uh, smoothly uh, uh, proceeds to get to this compound so this is a nice example actually it gives you a, a, a different way of making this and that and this uh, so likewise uh, like uh, exactly same for example uh, you want to apply this uh, sequence uh, to indole chemistry uh, you take in a protected indole and diiodo indole diiodo indole so uh, you uh, apply the same sequence same sequence as above so what do you expect now you have a uh, option selectivity so you have two different iodines and obviously now you know which one the one next to the uh, nitrogen next to the nitrogen and you will get to the uh, product you will get to the product so uh, that means one hydrogen uh, one iodine can be selectively okay and uh, So let us uh, take just one or two more maybe examples from the six-membered systems. Uh, this is something uh, which I could not explain. Probably uh, you would be able to explain. Uh, that means there are uh, some results uh, which cannot be explained. Once again, uh, you know, isopropyl chloride. So iso sorry isopropyl uh, isopropyl magnesium chloride. So, what do you, would you uh, expect? What would you expect from this reaction? Well, one thing I can say that okay, unlike butyl lithium, remember Chichibabin reactions. Chichibabin reactions. There is a possibility Chichibabin reactions, but again, butyl lithium, phenyl lithium, they are more nucleophilic than the corresponding Grignard. So, we cannot expect a Chichibabin kind of reactions here, uh, right? So then, obvious is halogen exchange possibility. There is a possibility now. Which halogen? Which halogen? <laughs> That's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's what uh, some uh, maybe uh, maybe we have to invoke something else. But uh, in this case, the reaction has taken place on the other halogen. Uh, I don't know whether you can. Uh, then, if you do this, all these reactions are same. Now, if you react with uh, staldehyde, so a new uh, CC bond will be formed, uh, CC bond that is uh, typical of the Grignard reaction. So, you will have this okay. and uh, uh, one more example probably uh, again a pyridine case. Now, you have iodine and chlorine. So, if you uh, do uh, use this previous reagent, so what uh, do you expect? Now, this is a little complicated. In the previous case, both were bromine, but in this case, one is iodine, one is bromine. So that means a bond strength as well as this acidity, etc. Uh, but uh, like before, uh, that means uh, th uh, the, the iodine is removed, and you get this magnesium chloride. This magnesium chloride. Okay. Magnesium chloride. Maybe we will uh, take one more uh, fuse system. Uh, this is an example where. Mm, you have uh, iodine and nitro. This is a special example. Maybe if the time permits, we'll uh, talk about a little bit of uh, these things: uh, the, uh, the organic um, organomagnesium compounds towards the nitro compounds. And in this case, uh, this example uh, requires phenyl magnesium chloride. Phenyl magnesium chloride. Uh, there is a special kind of reactions. Uh, we'll be talking about probably uh, towards the end of the class, maybe or in the next class. Uh, what you can see, mm, uh, there are uh, once again so many possibilities, so many possibilities. Nucleophilic addition to this, 
uh, two positions here. Okay, then addition elimination takes addition elimination can take place. You have iodo compounds, right? Iodo compounds like in case of pyrrole, we have seen if you have chlorine undergoes addition elimination and then essentially displacing the uh, sp2 halogens. So, there is a possibility and <coughs> also you have to take note of the other possibilities. The other possibilities is this halogen exchange. So, halogen exchange Be between the addition elimination and halogen exchange also is a possibility. It depends on the reactivity of the organic Grignard. If the Grignard is pretty reactive, then it is likely to that uh, you can get this uh, halogen exchange done, halogen exchange done. Okay. And <coughs> uh, this could be uh, uh, then I, I have a, a special reaction only for the saturated heterocycle, saturated heterocycle. This could be uh, useful for OVSEC. It is an azuridine case. Azuridine case you have now this is sulfoxide sulfoxide and a phenyl uh, aziridine. Now, if you use ethyl magnesium bromide, let us see, let us see. What could be the possibility? What uh, reactions do we expect? Aziridine opening, right? Why should it open? even before using this reagent that was also strength. So, in coming contact with this strength does not increase right. See, fundamentally if you see organic reactions are not many addition, substitution, eliminations and these things those few uh, the organic reactions. Okay. So, uh, why not first addition? So, actually uh, in this example, this is a peculiar example here, it attacks the uh, sulfoxide, it forms a it forms a uh, magnesium reagent here, magnesium bromide, magnesium bromide by showing the bonds here, I'm, I'm, I mean to say uh, the uh, stereochemistry is retained, stereochemistry is retained. So, uh, bromide and this is magnesium, magnesium. So, the, uh, this is uh, uh, actually also, this is nice way of making the corresponding carbon ion. That means, sulfoxide can be used as a carbon ion source. Okay. And um, so, so far we have talked uh, very quickly, I will just give you uh, these, uh, uh, this is a very important guideline by the way. So, there are bonds uh, in organometallic normally are classified, so, I mean uh, in several kinds and then percentage ionic character for example. So, uh, in organometallic chemistry, uh, uh, so we have talked about let us say lithium, organolithium, okay. percentage ionic character of organolithium could be how much, any idea? Oh really, uh, how did you know? That is interesting, huh? we remember it, that is great, exactly 43, that is real great. That's real great. Okay, then you have to tell me this one. Then I will. Uh, I think I will. Okay. What about po um, potassium? Uh, well, in my note, it is fifty-one. Okay. And then uh, uh, the other extreme, uh, copper. Huh? <coughs> copper is nine. So now you can fill in the blanks, right? Now you can fill in the blanks. This gives you some uh, idea. What, what does it tell you? If you have an organo potassium that becomes more base, more I, I, I would write I would say basicity how is that? Basicity, basicity goes up in this direction in the or uh, all of us know basicity has some resemblance with the nucleophilicity. So, if you have a potassium salt that becomes more nucleophilic. So, uh, similarly uh, then um, uh, where should magnesium fit in? Magnesium uh, on the uh, top, top of or below. Okay, good. So, how much is it? Three hours. <laughs> that is interesting. This is, uh, this is or pure gambling or what? It is good, 35. Yes, very right. That is great. That is great. 
Okay. So, like this you know you can rank them, well, uh, but for us the numbers are not uh, that important, uh, numbers are the uh, uh, to us the importance is the order. So, if anybody has come across a base called Slosser space, what is it Moon Moon? You nodded your head, what is it? And then the fourth year we talked about Slosser space. Slosser space is butyl lithium and potassium tertiary butoxide. What does it do? It just exchange the metals. So, it becomes carbon potassium bond, bond. So, it becomes more nucleophilic, more uh, basic, one of the strongest best used in organic chemistry. Okay. So, that means this order is a very useful one. Then, uh, then uh, okay, where do you put then organo zinc? Because today's topic was organo zinc. Here, uh, below magnesium. So, that means below magnesium. Uh, now, uh, Supriti, tell me what is the value? Uh, 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 close 18. So, you see there is a dramatic difference between organo magnesium and organo zinc. What is what does it tell you? Organo zinc is less reactive than, so that's why they don't react with uh, organo zinc do not react with uh, esters, and that is the origin of, that's the origin of, reformatsky reactions, reformatsky reactions. But if you want to sp2 halogen, uh, sp2 zinc, how do you make? How do you produce it? And uh, in case of heterocycles, uh, if you have I, okay, E stands for ester here, right? If you have bromine, uh, you can straight away uh, use uh, zinc actually, straight away zinc and with an additive lithium chloride. Lithium chloride, uh, apparently this reaction is pretty uh, friendly reactions, uh, you can uh, straight away produce the corresponding zinc compounds. Okay. So, uh, take any other um, 5 member heterocycle uh, with an uh, thiazole for example, um, bromine now 2 bromines. Now, uh, zinc would be uh, organo zinc would be produced again. Now, in the case of in this case, and uh, the options, right? The bromine, there are two different kinds of bromine. The one that is more labile, and we know which one is more labile because the one between the two heteroatoms, and so zinc is placed here and the rest of the things. And then the reactivity wise is uh, quite similar. Quite and then also, there are there are reactions. There are reactions actually uh, by which one can do the zincation by direct deprotonations, direct deprotonations. For example, uh, in this uh, case is a 5 member ring sorry, um, a spirazole derivative oxa, oxa, oxa pyrazole derivative and pyridine here and hydrogen here. So, you want to do the deprotonation here. That means, you have to stop the nucleophilic addition. So, what you do is this is a recent reagent TMP all of us know what is tetramethyl pipiridide uh, 2 and then uh, zinc and then all kinds of the recipes all kinds of the recipes 2 magnesium this is a nokel this is actually nokel's reagent magnesium chloride and what else one more additive is there lithium chloride. So, I mean anybody can guess now actually lithium lithium chloride has a remarkable ability I do not know. Uh, I am unable to actually uh, find the real literature, original literature, but people say lithium chloride has a lot of advantages, lot of uh, important reactivity profiles. Uh, uh, we have to dig out that. If anybody, assist, you can uh, just take uh, special interest in lithium chloride is a very useful additives in organic chemistry. Um, any case, so then you got this uh, obviously uh, a zincation done, right? So, zincation done and then this zincation and there are reactions all possible reactions one can do it. One of these reactions I think uh, I will just write this is something uh, probably you do not know. Uh, this is a reagent uh, in fact, we uh, this is a reagent we made in our lab uh, very interestingly uh, we actually we make it from diphenyl disulfide and also you remember if you do this oxidation with metachlor perbenzene acid, one particular sulfur get oxidized first. See, once oxy if the corresponding reagent is uh, this, if you try to oxidize this, uh, this uh, sulfur this get oxidized. Okay, uh, that means first oxidation is S, SO, and this. Second oxidation one would expect on this here, 
but th that does not go. The same sulfur undergoes oxidation. Uh, give an explanation next class may be ok. And um, so, uh, possible possible, but nowhere I have found the ex I mean we can suspect all this we can explain all these things yes that is could be one of the reasons that could be one of the reasons, but uh, no nobody uh, has courage to write that in you know black and white. Writing in black and white means you need to have extra courage. Okay, uh, you should be free from criticism, critics, and all these things. Any case, uh, what next then? The product should be an uh, addition of an electrophile, right? So uh, addition of an electrophile, and this is uh, phenyl. So phenyl and phenyl, and what is it? Uh, what is the electrophile? So, what is the electrophile? That is what everybody would think again this is that is that is the reason I have chosen this example ok. So, in all these carbon and chemistry if you want an SPH actually we did that in our lab uh, ok. And so, and then also I think I will talk about the rest of the things about the uh, organizing compounds in the next class because all of us know negative C coupling etcetera I think one of I uh, have learned little bit of these or more of it and then lastly this is this last example last example I think uh, maybe uh, in the next class we talk about this the little and then this. From the name you can make out the nationality of the person right Bartoli Bartoli from where Bartoli from <laughs> very good Italy right. Some of the names are typical, right? Shiva, uh, Narasimha, Narasimha, all these are Japanese. So, similarly, this is uh, Bartley is from Italy, yes, Italian scientist. Uh, he, uh, this morning, I was asking some of you, you know, have you ever come across a, a brand new organic reactions in recently, which was not reported or any similar version of this not reported? This is one of the reactions which is pretty a brand new reaction. Reason being is a reaction with a Grignard reagent and this uh, starting material is a old one nitro. Nitro benzene has been known in the literature for so many years. Grignard also has been known for right. Grignard also has been known in the literature for so many years. So, you can just write and um, magnesium bromide and in this example a uh, particular example actually ortho substituted nitro compound is taken and the temperature of the reaction is minus 40 degree. So, what do you expect? Let us say if Bartoli, Bartoli did not do the reaction what would you have expected? Okay, this R 1 had it been x and all these things then that addition substitution reaction would have taken place, but that is not there. So, it is a let us say carbon a carbon substituent this is a carbon substituent this is a carbon substituent and the name implies the reaction result is an indole derivative. So, uh, so that is a really a brand new reactions and what you get is this uh, indole derivative in, indole reactions and, so, and well defined means sorry this is uh, 2 this is 2 and this is 3. So, well defined reactions nice region specific single product only disadvantage only disadvantage you have to take, take note of this this is this is required in uh, high. So, two of the molecules of the green now two of the molecules are destroyed during the process ok. So, <coughs> this is a pretty very good reaction and some um, quite a few people are using this or uh, making this indole derivatives indole derivatives. So, maybe uh, in the uh, next class we will talk about uh, the mechanism of this reaction. Uh, uh, in brief, uh, uh, in brief that uh, one is used of for the framework the construction of the frame and the two other Grignards are spoiled or they consumed one for the reduction of the nitro to the nitroso compound and secondly other one equivalent is consumed to deprotonations of one of these hydrogen. So, eventually all of them are required. That means minimum. That's the requirement. Minimum three equivalents of this thing. Okay, and um, so we meet again on 
next Friday at 9.30. So, um, uh, so, most of you know right uh, this uh, cross coupling etcetera may, may we will just very quickly review very quickly review and then we will stop there.